What is up, everybody? Welcome to Magic Wars. We are very excited to be here. My name is Kevin Lissy. I am from It Resolves. I am joined by my very good friend Tyler Lee from Burst of Knowledge. We are super excited about this sponsorship and this video sponsored by our good friends over at Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. Tyler, what are we doing today? Well, Kevin, we're looking at the new set, Alliances, uh, based on Ravnica, mm -hmm. and we are going to be talking about the five guilds quickly mm -hmm. and looking at kind of the meta of what we should be playing in Limited, Yep. Um, since Sealed is obviously the way that we look at a set when it first previews. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, uh, what set did you choose? Yeah, so this is interesting. I had a debate about this, I just okay. want to point out, because uh, I wasn't sure which one I wanted to play. I really like all of them, uh, and I'm, we're going to talk a little bit more about each one as we go through, but I did end up with Orzov. Very, very excited about Orzov. A uh, lot of really cool stuff. What what did you decide to pick? Well, as a control player, I obviously yeah, went with Azorius. Yeah. So. Of course, of course. Yeah. I, so, okay. Tyler, I gotta ask, why Azorius? Is it just for the control aspect? Well, okay, so believe it or not, um, typically control and limited is probably the hardest way to actually draft. And so I felt like as a control player, I had to see if I could beat you. <laughs> <laughs> playing control. So this is like a challenge for you. That's all that this is. Yeah, is that's you what you're telling that. me? Yeah, you know, okay. I have to try and see if... Because I know people tend to go with the guild that they actually enjoy playing. Sure. You know, yeah. I identify as this guild. So can I actually... Fair enough. Exactly. Fair enough. Now, same goes for you. Why did you choose so the Orzhov? So actually, so again, I, I went through all of these guilds. It was actually a really tough decision. I looked at all the mechanics, the things that the highlight things that I'm going to be looking for in this, and what I really liked is the afterlife mechanic in particular yes. because it adds so much value to every single card that has it. I mean, it's insane. It is insane. Obviously, it works very, very well with the sacrifice sort of theme that mm -hmm. goes along with the Azorius, so I'm really excited to see how that plays out, but just added extra value. I mean, value to every card. I'm down. You know what I mean? Now, and I have to interrupt right there so a denim man oh, for God. azorius this is gonna be extremely difficult because it's like i'm playing magic handcuffed <laughs> because as a control <laughs> player i always play on your turn yeah so with that being said in choosing you know <sighs> i don't know how this is going to turn out yeah a denim it looks like a sweet idea yeah. um but we're gonna see out Really, um, can I actually play Azorius? Can I play Control in Limited? Is that's why we're doing this. That's, uh, so honestly, when uh, you told me that you picked Azorius, I was a little like, why Azorius? Only because in Limited, I feel like Addendum is, and I might be wrong on this, I'm going to go ahead and say, roast me in the comment sections <laughs> if I happen to be wrong, but I kind of feel like Addendum is like in Limited not the best mechanic out of this set. I think it's a really strong mechanic. I'm really excited to see it, especially in Constructed. It's a new twist for sure. But it is a very new twist. Yeah. I feel like it's it really does, as you said, kind of handcuff the player a little bit. Just in terms of, do I want this extra ability or do I just play instant speed? How do I how do I flow with this? Correct. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, and let's just you know talk about the elephant in the room. <laughs> we all know that Teferi from Dominaria <laughs> um, is honestly the best card in standard right now. Yeah, we he all is know. A soul, he's a standalone wing con. Yep. Um, a great planeswalker. He's seen modern play. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't have your play set, you kind of wish <laughs> you had. You're missing out. <laughs> um, as for a denim, it really is kind of turning back to what happened in original Ravnica, which mm -hmm. is very unfortunate, where we don't get to see really blue-white shine because yeah. something would have had to have happened. Yeah. Now, we will come to see if... Um, Blue white is played differently. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Now we had talked about some of the cards that we were hoping to really see, mm -hmm. and um, I think I'm going to go first on this one and By all talk means, about please do a non denim card. Uh, <laughs> the one I'm actually most looking forward to seeing if I can actually play with it in the limited <laughs> environment specifically is yeah. High Alert. It's an uncommon. It's a one colorless, one white, one blue, and it reads: Each creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. You can pay two colorless and one blue white, mm -hmm. untapped target creature. Now, in the limited uh, environment, there are actually a lot of uh, two fives and zero yeah, five ones. There are, yeah. And so, these cards that have these really big toughness on these blue cards, mm -hmm. with this one card being able to pull like one or two at an uncommon level, sure, make those actually quite viable to actually become 
you know, not necessarily the first round picks. Sure. But you actually are no longer like, well, what do I do with a zero five? Yeah, exactly. You have a use for them Correct. now. Yes. And I think what's interesting in that particular case is that seems like the kind of card to me that would be fantastic and sealed, not necessarily great in draft. And, and the only reason yeah. I say that is because normally that's not the case. I normally I'm, I take draft and sealed fairly similarly most of the time. Okay. That being said, with a card like this, if you draft it, you're very sus susceptible to whatever cards you get past, and it may not be let this card works out, Correct. if that makes sense. Correct. Whereas something in sealed, you know your sealed pool right off the bat. You can build around. It's easier to kind of make that work. Yep. I, I'm interested to see. If you get it, <laughs> if you don't build it, I'm going to be really mad at you. You have to build it. I will not only promise <laughs> to try and build this, I hope that this is one of the cards that is um, intentionally put in to yeah. the actual... Um, packs that are seated for sure. these pre-release kits. Sure. Yeah. Um, so speaking on that though, what is your number one card that you wanted? The to number one card, and I took a lot of time with this, is not Kaya. <laughs> Fair enough. I want to just mention this very quickly. Kaya is a very interesting card. I like three mana planeswalkers a lot. We talked about this just before we started shooting. Three mana planeswalkers, generally pretty good, and I don't think she's bad, don't get me wrong, but... I don't think she's going to be at her best in limited. I feel like she's much more of a card that you really have to be able to build around, have the card pool to build around. Yes. Sealed and draft do not feel like you're... It just doesn't feel like you're going to have the breadth of cards that you're going to need to make that work as well. It does make sense. Not as, fan, not as big of a fan on that one. But Seraph of the Scales, on the other hand, Ooh, a yes. very interesting card. So two, man, two a white and a black, excuse me, for a 4-3 flyer. Yes. With Afterlife 2, featuring that new mechanic, which I am so excited about. On top of that, you can pay a white to give it Vigilance. You can also pay a black to give it Death Touch. I love this. Now, so good. It is really good. <laughs> and unfortunately, this is one of those decisions that when I feel like we're sitting down to actually open these up and mm -hmm. play together, I feel as though we're going to have to make the decision of... In order for me to fend you off, yeah. I'm either going to have to build in the air yeah. and build wide. Yes. Which is one of the reasons why High Alert was on my radar, mm -hmm. to be able to go wide. Absolutely. Um, but with a threat like her, I mean, a 4-3 angel is the not easy to... And it comes back. That's the thing. Oh, the thing so that good. I love about this card is, on the face of it, minus... Forget the abilities that you have to pay to activate, okay? Yeah. It is a four mana, four three flyer, yep. already great, yep. with afterlife two. Yeah. So if it dies, you still get two mm. one one spirits just hanging out behind the scenes. <laughs> On top of that, you can provide her with vigilance, death touch, however you want to do it, to favor you in combat. That's just it's fantastic. So it's one it's of a cards, mana yeah. sink, which is usually Correct. kind of the way I, I like to have a mana sink or two, mm -hmm. in a, especially in a draft or a sealed deck, because the, it just usually pays off pretty well. So. Yeah. I'm really surprised that you actually didn't recognize um, Priests of the Forgotten Gods. I li so, interesting card. It's a, it's a little, like, intensive for a draft or a sealed deck, in my opinion. You know, and I'm not really sure if it's one of those cards that specifically is going to be, actually be viable to mm -hmm. be played in. Um, you know, if you look at... Well, let's talk about this really quickly. Yeah. Um, there are two cards that I want to talk about that actually I feel are going to be not necessarily overlooked mm -hmm. but are one's a huge limited bomb sure and then the other one is is this really worth uh going after so the first one will be uh gate colossus the yeah. eight mana colorless um big body that can come back if you sacrifice a gate mm -hmm. um the thing i feel about this card specifically is well is this a card you throw into any deck possibly yeah or is this something that when you sit down in your sealed pool or you're playing at your next local draft, do you want to grab all the copies of this card? Right. And it's really difficult because, you know, a 8-8 eight, eight artifact that can fit into any color scheme, it is extremely good. The difficult part is you have to have gates. Right. You have to have at least one or two of these Colossuses mm -hmm. in the deck to make them. I mean, don't get me wrong. An 8-8 eight, eight is always good. Always great. When you can pay one less for it. Yep. Um, it's not that bad, but... We'll kind of have to see. I want to see how that card that. plays yeah. out. That's an interesting one for me as well, so I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. And then the other one is uh, Plaza of Harmony. Um, <laughs> this one's a weird one because when it enters the battlefield, uh, if you control two or more gates, you just gain three life. Yes. Which is really good. And it's not a lot of hard work to do in this 
draft archetype because no. you get a gate in every pack. Yeah, exactly. Uh, your limited pull have at least three to five of them. Yeah. And then um, you can tap it, and no matter what, this land does come into play untapped and it produces a colorless. Right. It's pretty good there. But you can also add one of any color that uh, is a gate type that you control. Mm-hmm. And so I feel is that that just has so much room of playability. So much playability, um, I agree. The gate Colossus and this, I just wish that the Plaza of Harmony was mm-hmm. also a gate. No, I agree. That, that was, was something, that I feel like that's an oh, overlook. Yeah. A little bit, you know what I mean? I mean, I get why it's not kind of, because there are 10 gates. End of st- st- Lore-wise, I think yeah. it kind of makes sense. But it just would have... Like mm-hmm. for playability's sake, it would have been so much exactly, better. Yeah, um, because, but I do kind of understand where yeah, they're coming from. Because if you look at it, Gateway Plaza is already a gate. Yeah, I mean that's um, the thing. Why not Plaza of Harmony? Yeah, I, I, I get it. So I get it. I, I want to bring up a card really quick, sure. but I'm a little bit surprised uh, you haven't mentioned for Azorius. Yeah, which is Deputy of Detention. Deputy of Detention. So this is an interesting card. So. If you played in Return to Ravnica, the first Return to Ravnica, uh, <laughs> they there was a card in that uh, set. It was an enchantment for one, a white and a blue called yeah. Attention Sphere. Yep. It basically exiled a permanent, all that. So it was exile effects on an enchantment, very similar to a lot of other enchantment removal that we see, that yep. we've seen recently, in fact. This is that on a stick for the same price. I think that this is a great card. It adds to the removal pile. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it is a rare. It is a rare. So you can't bank on it by any means. Yeah. I mean, it is a cool, you know, piece of removal that mm-hmm. blue white will desperately need. My problem with it is that it is on a stick, and it is. so, you know, like we talked about, you know, you're gonna have in black a number of actual pieces of just really inexpensive removal. Right. That's so, true. So, you know, a three mana one three that does the same thing as Suspension Sphere. Mm-hmm. I feel as though it is going to be good. It will be played. Absolutely. Um, but it's just going to die and your opponent gets your creature back. It's a lot like Hostage Taker, if you well, really think about that. it is a lot like Hostage Taker, taker excuse me, but what I like about it is a couple things. One, yeah. because it's on a stick, it is obviously not a huge threat. I get that. But yeah. it's on the board. It has board presence. They're going to have to waste a removal spell on a 1-3, yeah. which is going to feel really bad. Granted, they get their card back. But they're not then using that piece of removal on any of your big bombs or anything like that. So it's very much a tempo play in my mind. It is. It's a stall. And I get that they're going to be able to remove it. It's going to be pretty easy to remove it. But they do have to burn removal or creatures in combat, some something like that. I also, uh, and this is just a little tidbit of fun, uh, it does work pretty well with your uh, switch power and toughness card. It does. Just um, saying. <laughs> no, I mean, to rectify that, hey, it might have three power later on. Yeah. Um, that is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I mean, we have to first notate that, okay, it does exile any non-land card. Yeah. Okay, which is good. It's great. It doesn't have to necessarily hit that. They will have to waste a piece of that removal. Yep. Absolutely, I feel it is a tempo play. Um, but again, I mean, and also notating this, it is a wizard. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can see some form of fringe uh, American color wizards. Yes. I think that's Um, definitely possible with all the Dominaria support. I mean, and it's quite funny because I'm actually looking to probably build uh, 12 counters. Yeah. uh, Coming up uh, in the next standard format between (laughs) Absorb. Um, You know, you just have all the good three mana uh, counters. Sure. Um, Deputy of Detention really screams um, remove anything that gets through those counters mm-hmm. you know, those early drops and then you just can just keep countering everything else Absolutely. Uh, once you get up to 6 man because I mean Sinner's going to be crazy oh man um, Control got a huge bump but I now, just want to point out <laughs> we've been talking a lot about white and black yeah um, and then white and blue I know we're going to have some overlap we are white. absolutely um, and we're going to do our best not to kind of build into Esper and build into... Yeah, we're going to do the best we can to stick with our guilds. That being said, if I open up a bomb card that I just have to play, I'm not above playing it. That's all I'm saying. But I do think it's important uh, that we kind of very briefly talk about the other guilds a little bit. I was just going to say the same thing, yes. I've got a card from each of the three other guilds that we are not playing that I'm just a little bit interested in. I feel like they're a little bit of a flagship card for these. They really, really support the guilds pretty well. Not including any of the guild mages, though I will say the guild mages do look pretty good this They do set. look good, yeah. Um, I'm going to start with Gruul very quickly, though. Okay. Uh, with Gruul Spellbreaker. This okay. card... Oh. Eat your heart out, aggro players. This card is amazing. It's one a red and a green for a 3-3. Mm-hmm. It does have trample. 
Uh, it also has Riot, which if you don't know what Riot does, basically as it comes into play, you either choose to give that creature haste so it can come into play as a 3-3 trampling hasty yep. uh, beast, whatever you want to call it, um, or you can give it a plus one, plus one counter. Uh, so you can bump it up to a 4-4. Now it doesn't have haste if you do that, but on top of that, what I really like about this card is that it gives you hexproof and it hexproof. Yes. As long as it's your turn. It's for the, three mana. Yeah. The card, if you play Value. that, <laughs> like, <laughs> that's going to be the hard part. I mean, yeah. I chose Azorius because literally I wanted to see, is it viable to even play this guild? Right. Um, with such a heavy girl and um, <laughs> just that red black uh, dominating aggro yeah. decks. It's yeah, going to yeah. be very, very difficult it's to gonna get It's going to be tough. Through. Um, but one thing that I wanted to also notate, since we're talking about that hexproofing type sure. of um, dilemma that I'm going to have to overcome, mm -hmm. uh, Rhythm of the Wild. It is a one colorless card. Yeah. red green enchantment. Creature spells you control can't be countered, and non token creatures you control have right. Such a good card. Did I just say that? Yeah. Or didn't you just talk about that card? No. Okay. We no, no. You're okay. good. Okay. <laughs> this card is awesome. Okay, so here's the thing with this card. This is important. Okay. This can give one creature two riot triggers. Yeah. Something that I want to point out with this. The riot triggers stack. You get to choose each time if you want to give the creature a plus one, plus one counter, or haste. You could theoretically give a creature double haste for no absolute reason. But you could. <laughs> you could also just give it a plus one, plus one counter and haste, or you could give it two plus one, plus one counters. Sure. I think this card's really, really good. Obviously, against control decks, Yeah. it is just the bane of their existence. Yeah. Like, it just wrecks a control deck. <laughs> the other one I wanted to talk about was uh, Cinder Vines. And oh, yeah. Man, this one is just so unbelievably good. Um, this is going to be one of those cards that you see a lot in Commander play from mm -hmm. the future. Uh, if you know what it does, Cinder Glades, it's one red, one green. It's an enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, I mean, control players are going to hate this yeah. card. Uh, <laughs> it deals one damage to that player. Then you can pay one sacrifice and destroy target artifact or enchantment. Cinderglades deals two damage to that tournament's controller. This is one of those cards that if you can just stick early on... Oh, you're, you win, right? You like, out, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, we're going to need a lot of life game oh, mechanic man. abilities to fight through this card. Absolutely. Um, Which, I will say, they balance pretty well with Addendum. Yeah. I mean, cards like Sphinx's Insight seems like a very good way to, if you're against an aggro deck and yeah. you're not going to be instant speed countering a bunch of stuff because mm -hmm. there's just no point, main phase it, draw your two cards, gain a couple life, Correct. might save you a turn. I think uh, so. So I think against certain decks, that, and again, that's where I, not to bring this back to Addendum, but <laughs> uh, where I think Addendum is really going to shine is the flexibility in Constructed yeah. is fantastic. You're going to be able to play against whatever matchup that you happen to be against yeah. because of you know kind of getting that bonus wherever need be De definitely now uh let me ask you this yep what are your thoughts on the devil the devil yes it is two black one red destroy target artifact creature or planeswalker i like it a lot it's pretty good it's pretty good okay it's a little bit of a callback to dreadbore yes uh it's a little bit less efficient obviously though it does technically hit more uh, I really like it. I think three mana, uh, or turn three in particular, is going to be just a powerhouse of a turn in this standard environment. There's so much. I mean, yeah. counters, there's removal on three, Mortify and Orzhov, another reason why I wanted to pick it. I mean, there's just so much. Like, now, it's, here's the thing, though. I mean, we have Assassin's Trophy yeah. uh, from original uh, or guilds. Yeah. Um, then we have Devil for three. Yep. Um, you are going into two different colors um, that's not shared by black. Right. Um, luckily for us, though, I don't see myself splashing into <laughs> the black red. You just have to splash yeah. a little bit of red to yeah, get this card going. Yeah, I, I kind of debate on it. I I don't think, again, we're, I'm going to stick to my guild as best as I Perfect. can. Okay. Uh, if we do happen to open up just a powerhouse card, I don't think for removal... It's necessarily going to be worth it, though I will say if I get a few removal pieces that are splashing, I, I'm going to have to go for it. You might have but to, yeah. I will say Orzov in particular gets plenty of removal. Uh, definitely Mortify being a very, very good one. There is also another card. I wrote it down. Final Payment. Uh, very good card. Uh, I believe you have to sack a creature, but it's two mana. Yes. And you, I mean, afterlife, so it's kind of fine. Um, <laughs> so I'm really, really stoked. I feel confident that I'm going to be able to stick to my guild, but again, if I get a bomb, 
uh, and it splashes a color. I mean, my sorry, buddy. disappointment <laughs> is that there is no um, big removal in my colors right now. There's not. I mean, you're reliant on the counters a little bit. A little too much. A little too much. I agree. I don't have access to settled wreckage, obviously. No. <laughs> um, you know, cleansing Nova, tw- 2019. Like yeah, I don't really it have anything to really. It's it's <sighs> gonna be a bit tough, I think. Um, I really see after we get the set launched out. Yeah. That blue white control is not going to be a viable format. I think necessarily. it's I think it's going to have to splash another color. I think we're going to have to go Esper or I think we're going to see control decks or mid range decks maybe in the Jund or Sultai colors. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to see a little bit more of that. Sultai was something that we played with on it resolves a yeah. little bit when guilds came out. Okay. Uh, and we did have a list. We thought it was a pretty strong list. You guys seem to like it on YouTube. And um, it, it I think, is a good starting point. But I think now with Simic coming in in particular, there's a lot of really interesting cards that I'm excited to see there. And I will say, speaking of Simic, a card that I want to talk about very quickly. Sure. Uh, Hydroid Krasis. Okay. This card looks sick. Uh, it is X, a green, and a blue for a 0-0. Zero, zero. Yep. Now, it comes into play with X-1-1 one, one counters on it. Pretty standard. Yep. Flexible, which I love in Sealed. On top of that. Ooh, voice crack. On top of that, excuse me. Uh, you also gain half of X to your life total and draw half of X cards yep. to your hand. Now you do round down, but mm-hmm. obviously you play even if you need to. I think this card is potentially going to be the card that helps out that Sultai mid-range style deck because it's going to not only draw you into more and more cards, which you're going to need, yeah. it's also going to buffer you against a lot of those aggro style decks, which we will see. My There's thing, no way we won't. Yeah, and my thing with this is that Wizards has always done a thing with Hydras. Yeah. So far, there has never been a really good Hydra. I agree. There have been playable Hydras. Yes. But there's never been like that one that just takes over. Really? Ta- no, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Um, now, since we're on Simic, I gotta ask your opinion on Prime Speaker. Okay. We know that we have already seen um, a lot of things that when a creature lets you sacrifice another creature, you can yep. search for something, the creature has to stick around, get haste. Yeah, yeah. Um, where exactly are you at with this card where you're able to just cheat in these creatures yeah. in this living? I mean... I'm very on the fence with it. I mean... Let's just look at the limited uh, perspective from it. Is this something that if you pull... You try and um, build around a little bit? Yeah. I don't know. I, I I looked at this card and I thought about talking about it in this intro. I chose not to because I'm a little on the fence about it still. Sure. It's just one of those cards that like it could be so good. If you can really get the build around cards for it, it would be great. But if you don't if your curve is just not great for it or if it just doesn't work out, then I, I don't see it working well. See, because for me it's still a four mana two four. That's with a really good ability. It is a good ability. Unless you don't have something to go get. That's right. worthwhile. Right. So that's why I think it comes down to if you're in Simic yeah. color scheme. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, so we've gone over, um, you know, the new Hydra. Yep. Um, I think we should just move into our next segment. I think we should too. Guys, we are super, super excited to play out this game. As of the recording of this, I'm going to spoil something a little bit. We're going to break the fourth wall. <laughs> <laughs> we are pre-recording this intro, so we have no clue what we're going to open yet, but I'm very excited to open it. Again, I will be playing Orizov. Tyler's going to be... Excuse me. I said that correctly. I thought I said Azorius. <laughs> I'm going to be playing Orizov. Tyler is going to be playing Azorius. I am very excited for this. Tyler, are you stoked? I'm pretty excited about this, yes. Awesome. All right, guys. Let's jump into the game. I hope you enjoy it. What's up, guys? Before we jump into the game, I just wanted to take a quick peek at the deck list that I actually came up with from my pre-release kit. Uh, maybe even a few key cards from this, uh, one of which is Seraph of the Scales. I did talk about it in the intro. I'm really, really excited to play with that. Uh, I do think it's going to be a very big powerhouse card, uh, so we'll see how it actually pans out. I do have a few pieces of interaction. I did throw a drill bit in there just because I kind of want to see how that card actually pans out in this uh, with the spectacle costs and things like that, just how that actually works out. We also have Summary and Judgment and things like that for some removal. Uh, we do have an Orzov Locket as well. It's just it, it helps ramp you a little bit. It also gives you some draw uh, late game if you really just don't have any other play. I, do, I did pick up uh, two Guild Gates, so I think that my mana is going to be pretty smooth. I do have some high cost cards like Basilica, uh, Bell Hunt, as well as Kaya's Wrath, which 
I debated on running Kai's Wrath, but I do think it actually will work out here. Uh, yes, uh, he's running Azorius, so I'm expecting him to have a lot less creatures, but blue-white flyers is a thing, and I want to be able to take care of that if need be. Plus, there's some extra life gain off of that. Uh, one other card that I really wanted to talk about was Smothering Tithe. I am not sure how this card is going to work out. Uh, it is four mana, it is an enchantment. Uh, but it does give you some extra treasure tokens. I don't know if that's worth it for this or not yet. Uh, I don't have any huge payoffs in terms of high mana cost cards. I obviously round out right around the six, five to six range uh, as far as mana cost goes, but uh, I do think that it will potentially help. So I'm going to try it out here. We'll see how it goes. I do expect because he is in blue uh, that he's going to be drawing a lot of extra cards. So hopefully I'll get a lot of extra treasure tokens and then be able to kind of take over the game that way. Uh, so we'll see. That's kind of the idea. Uh, I did have a lot of consideration for Curve in this deck. Uh, as you can see, I only have one watch, uh, one drop in Resolute Watchdog. I do have a few two drops, some three drops, and then four is really where I kind of maxed out. Obviously, I've got a few things over that, but got a lot of four drops in here. Uh, the Bell Hunt, uh, the Wrath, the Seraph. Uh, rally to battle is hopefully going to be a decent win condition uh, if need be. I do have a few things with afterlife, so hopefully I'll be able to to, to stick some creatures onto the board. Uh, that's really the idea. And then I also have Lumbering Battlement as a one of, uh, I, that was actually my pre-release uh, dated card. And so I'm actually interested to see how that card works out. Uh, I like the idea of being able to cash in some smaller creatures late game. Uh, to boost that up and then potentially even get them back late game. So I really like this. I'm hoping that it's going to be a really good matchup. Please stick around. Uh, we're excited to see how this pans out, but let's move into the game. All right, everybody. So I have my packs opened up. Everything is sorted and I have the final cut in front of me uh, to start this deck tech off with. Uh, we have, let's see here, 15 lands total, which is a little on the light side for a control deck. I'm running with uh, three main deck counters, uh, two clinches, one thought collapse. We are a little light on our removal package. We only have a bring to trial, a summary judgment, and a dispose deploy. So we're going to have to make do with those. Uh, we are pretty good on our card draw. I only have two real limited threats. We have a Azorius Knight Arbiter and a Azorius Skyguard. I'm hoping to use basically Angelic Exaltation to get through to my opponents. We have a couple of things with uh, Adapt, and we're basically going to play some uh, creatures to kind of lock down the board. Then we are going to follow up with catching our opponent off with a couple of main deck counters. Hopefully we get rid of uh, some of their cards that they're really hoping on and banking in. And then we're gonna come through with our Knights and our Sky Guard to kind of either cut through unblocked or in the air. Uh, that is the deck tech. So hopefully this goes as planned and we'll see how it goes. What's up guys, we're here shuffled up, ready to go. Uh, Tyler actually won the die roll, but put me on the play. Uh, as he is playing Azorius. No surprise there. So, uh, we're ready to get into it. We do have our gameplay cam. <laughs> Let's actually uh, check, out, check out our hands and get into it. We have not taken mulligans or anything like that. I think I'm pretty good with mine. You know, there was a reason why I actually took the draw, even though I won the dice roll, and we're going to try this to see if Azorius can get there. Fair so. enough. Uh, I should just mention really quickly, we are only playing one game for this. We're a little bit strapped for time to get editing done. Uh, so we're only going to play one game, but hopefully it will be a good one. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so really stoked. But uh, I get to lead off. Uh, I'm just going to play an Azori or an Orzov Guildgate. Excuse me. One Orzov Guildgate. Orzov or Guildgate. My opponent. Yes. Uh, right. So that's it for me. I will pass. All right. I'm going to go on tap draw step. This is looking good already, so I'm going to drop the planes and I'm going to pass it back to you. Okay. Uh, untap. And we will go ahead and draw. So, uh, I think what I'm going to do, I'll play a planes and I am going to pass. Yep, sounds good. All right, we are going to drop an island for sure. And we're going to actually cast Thine Taker. It is a 2-1. During your turn, spells your opponent's uh, cast cost one more to cast, and abilities your opponent's activate cost one more to activate, unless they're mana abilities. It okay. also has afterlife one. Sounds and good. And then I will pass to you, Kevin. Sounds good. So I will draw. Uh, very interesting card. So I will go ahead and play a Swamp. And what would I like to do here? 
You know what? Let's do this. We are going to play Drill Bit. All right. So, uh, Drill Bit is a sorcery. It uh, reveals target player's hand. I choose a non-land card from it, and that player discards that card. Wow. All right, so. Plenty of action. Plenty of action. So you're on two lands now. Hmm. Now, while you're deciding this, Kevin, you yeah. decided to take your turn three off to cast a hand I did. spell. Are you hoping to follow this up with a creature on turn four? That's kind of my thought process with this one. Uh, so I've got, a, I had a few options this turn uh, that I could have done. I could have actually played out a creature now, but I'd rather take the opportunity, especially being against Azorius, to kind of strip apart the hand a little bit and just make sure that I know what I'm up against. Uh, and that way, if you've got a counter or something I can bait, I can do that kind of a thing. Sure. Uh, what I'm noticing, obviously you do not have a counter, but you do have a hand full of action. Uh, which is quite good for you, but uh, I think what I'm actually going to take is Bring to Trial. Sure, the Exile of Spell. Yep. Okay. Uh, so is I will let you have those. Uh, yes, I believe so. It is just discarded. Perfect. Okay, these will go back to my hand. Those go back to your hand, and I will pass turn. Okay, I'm going to move to Untap Draw. Yep. And then we will play an Island for the turn. Okay. Then I'm going to move to Combat. Do it. I'm going to clear attacks for two. All right, I have no blocks, no responses, so I go down to 18. All right, then main phase two. We will play 10th District Veteran. Yep. It's a 2-3 with Vigilance. Whenever 10th District Veteran attacks, untap another target creature you control. Sounds good. And then I'll pass the turn to you, Kevin. Sounds fantastic. So I will go ahead and untap. I will draw a card. We'll play a Plains, and that's going to be... Yep. That's going to be it. We're going to play Seraph of the Scales. Ooh. So this is the card that I talked about in the intro, uh, and I was really happy to actually <laughs> open it. So uh, this card is awesome. It's a 4-3 flyer. It does have Afterlife 2. I can pay a white and give it Vigilance, or I can pay a black and give it Death Touch. Either way, it is just a swingy bomb. Uh, so we'll see how long yeah. it lasts. <laughs> it seems pretty good. Yep. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. On tap and draw. We'll see what we get. Hmm. <laughs> Well, you have a 4 3. I do have got a two creatures. Um, I've got nothing that can really deal damage in Azorius. And I don't have a land to play this turn. So. Can't I can't complain about that. I think what I'm going to do, <laughs> and this is going to be a little non Azorius, and I'm going to keep up tempo right now because I've got a bigger forward state than you. Mm. Um, now, if you don't know, Kevin, yeah, we talked about what my ability is. Addendum. Yes. Yes. And this is one thing that you want to remind yourself of is that it is nice to play on your turn, but sometimes when you do stuff <laughs> on your own turn, yeah, you get to attack. <laughs> so, Kevin, I'm going to pay uh, one planes and an island, and I'm going to basically cast Dispose, targeting yep. your creature, and then draw a card. Sounds good. So I tap my creature, you replace it with another card. And the nice part about that is that I was also able to hit my land drop. There so you we'll go. That's important. <laughs> it is important indeed. Okay, so then I'm going to declare attacks. Yep. And then 10th uh, District Veteran has Vigilance, and yep. when it attacks, I can untap another target creature. You don't want to untap my Seraph? I Are thought about sure? it, and it's a creature that I control. Ah, uh, so, okay. Well, the know, illegal target, yes. then. I understand. So um, <laughs> we'll be coming in for four damage. All right. I cannot do anything tapped out, so I go ahead and take four. I am now down to 14. Okay, and then I have no other place, so I'll pass the turn back to you. Sounds great. So I will go ahead and untap. Uh, hopefully this is going to be a good turn for me. We will see. So I will play a Swamp. We'll kick it off with that. And now I've got a couple options. Okay, so I think I'm going to have to do this. So uh, we are going to tap three and play Under Cities Embrace. So target opponent sacrifices a creature. If I control a creature with power four or greater, uh, I also gain four life. I do control a creature, so I gain four. Mm. I assume you have no responses. I should have asked. You know, you are correct. You should have asked. <laughs> I um, saw your hand, but, you know, it is what it is. I have no responses. Um, this is a tough decision. Do I want the afterlife body, mm. or do I want to keep the creature that has a really nice stacks ability? I'm going to actually choose to discard the veteran. Okay. That hurts. I don't know if that's the right play to do right now, um, but I've made my decision. Okay, fair enough. Uh, then I think uh, I'm going to move to attacks. Sure. 
Uh, so, I'm going to attack with this, uh, and I should say I'm going to give it uh, Vigilance and uh, just Vigilance. And okay, that's sure. it. So you pay the... Uh, I pay the white. Give it Vigilance. To give it Vigilance to Claire. All right. I have no way to block, so I'll just yep. go down to 16. Sounds good. All right, go ahead. All right, so we'll see what we draw on to and tap and draw. I love this Seraph, okay. man. It's so good. <laughs> if you open Seraph, play it. You should probably <laughs> just play it. <laughs> it's real good. I'm going to have to take this turn off and yep. play on my turn. Yep. We're going to pay for uh, one planes and three blue. Mm hmm. Sphinx is in sight. With a denim, if you cast it during your main phase, which I did, I'll gain two life. Sounds good. So I will go to 18 and I'll draw two cards. All right. All right, those will go to my hand. Now, I can't get through to your creature right now. I've already played a land drop, and I didn't pull many one drops, so I think I'm done for the turn. Done for the turn? You, yes. Okay. I will go ahead and untap. Uh, draw for the turn. Ooh, that is interesting. Options, options, all the options. Okay, so, um, so at this point, I'm kind of, I've got two routes here, uh, and I'm not 100% sure which is actually going to be the best uh, route. Uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is, you have one land up. One point, yes. Okay, so what I'm going to do, uh, first of all, give vigilance. Sure. And then move to attacks. Yep. Declare attack. No blocks. Okay, so you take four. Go to 14. Okay, uh, now I will second main phase. Uh, we are going to play Basilica Bell Hunt. Ooh, okay. So it's a 3 4. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card and I gain three life. So I'm going to go up to actually 21. I think I will discard my Civic Stalwart. Okay. Uh, then in that case, I am tapped out. I will pass the turn. Okay. I will untap and draw. We're going to play planes. Um, let's see if we can make this <laughs> stick. We'll cast the Azorius Sky Guard. Okay. Um, flying first strike and creatures your opponent's control get minus one, minus zero. Sounds so good. So remember that is a stack ability. So. Yep. And then I'm going to have to pass it back to you, Kevin. All right, so I will go ahead and untap. Uh, draw for turn. Okay, so I am going to uh, declare attackers. Proceed. Okay, so uh, first things first, I'm actually going to do this. So uh, to clarify, this is now a 2-4 because of this. This is a 3-3 three, three because of that. I'm actually going to clear no blocks, Kevin. No blocks? No blocks. All right. So I'm just going to go to 9. You go to nine. Uh, and I think I will pass turn. Okay. Let's see if we can get something good to kind of level this out, because you've got two really nice bombs. I've got something cool, too. Man, this is crazy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play a island. Mm -hmm. We will play Azorius Knight Arbiter. He is a 2-5 Vigilance and cannot be blocked. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and declare attacks. In response? Sure. Uh, I'm going to cast Rally to Battle. So this is an instant. Creatures I control get plus one, plus three until the end of the turn and untap them. All right. So I'm going to untap all my stuff. Sure. They get plus one, plus three. Hmm. All right. Uh, and that will be it. Um, this will die here. Yep. And... This will also die. Yep. Then I will create one, 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 night token. Absolutely. That was a good play, Kevin. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I will pass it back to you. Okay. I will untap and draw. Okay, so I will play a land for a turn. Okay, uh, move to attacks. Sure. Um, and we will pay one, give this vigilance, and then swing with both. Sure. So I'll go to uh, declare blockers. Yep. And I'll block that. Okay. That uh, is fine. Okay. Right. So my token will die. Yep. Nothing happens here. Nothing happens there. So then I will pay two black uh, for an Orzov Enforcer, which is a one-two death touch, and it has afterlife one. 
Nice. Pretty straightforward card, but I do like it. Uh, and I will pass. All right. I'll move to untap. Yep. Draw. All right, I'm going to go ahead and play a island. Yep. Um, we will play Sage's Rose Servant. It's a 2 1, and when it enters the battlefield, I can scry 2. Sounds good. Um, I'll scry 1 to the top and 1 to the bottom. Okay. And then play the last card in my hand. Yep. It is a 1-4 that I can pay two, uh, one colorless and a white, mm -hmm. to give it vigilance till the end of the turn. That is flying. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go to combat, and then uh, I will just get in for two. This can't be blocked. Yep. It has vigilance, so yep. get in for two. So I take two. And then, Kevin, it'll be your turn. Sounds good. So I'm going to go ahead and untap. We're going to draw a card. Uh, so what I'm going to do is move to attacks. Sure. Uh, I am going to pay one white and give this Vigilance first, and then swing with this. Uh, so I will swing. I'm going to swing with the team. All right. Let's make it happen. So, Kevin, you're coming in. I will move my knight over here. I'm going to mm -hmm. push my servant into this. Okay. And then I'm going to have to actually offer up the Arbiter over here. Okay. But I'm going to hold back my uh, Senate Conquer or whatever it's called. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yeah, so two blocks here, and that will get through. That will get through. So my question is now... Okay, so you take four. Yep, so I'll go to five. Uh, these do trade off. Mm -hmm. Because this does have afterlife one, I will get a 1-1 one, one flying black-white spirit creature token. I'm going to tap two, and I'm going to play an imperious oligarch. So it is a 2-1 with vigilance. It also has afterlife one. Pretty straightforward. All right. Anything else, Kevin? That is it. All right. So I'll untap and draw the card I scribed at the top. Yep. All right. We're going to play Sentinel's Mark. Um, enchanting creature gets plus one, plus two, and has vigilance, and uh, it has a denim. Mm -hmm. So when uh, it enters the battlefield, if you cast it during your main phase, enchanting creature also gains lifelink until the end of the turn, which cool. is why we're casting it now. Yep. So we'll equip that to... Here. So it is now a 2-6, Yes. and until the end of the turn it does have lifelink, mm -hmm. and it does also have vigilance. Yes. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get in with the team, uh, declare attacks. Okay, well, I cannot do anything here, obviously, uh, and I think I just take two. Alright, I'll gain two off the lifelink, and I'll go to seven. Yep. And then I'll pass it back to you. Alright, so uh, I'm going to untap everything. Uh, draw a card. Uh, we will play a Orzhov Guild Gate. First things first, gonna get Vigilance. Sure. You have no cards in hand, correct? No cards in hand right now, no. Okay, then let's do it. We're gonna swing. Uh, that also has Vigilance. We're gonna swing with the team. With the team you're coming in for. All right. Yep. Um, I guess I have to just block and block. I'll take three over here. And um, I'll, you have priority. What would you like to yeah, do? Yeah, so uh, I am going to give Seraph Death Touch. Sure. Uh, then uh, I will also play a Spire Mangler. It does have flash. It's also a flying creature. When it enters the battlefield, target creature with flying you control gets plus two plus zero. Playing that on the spirit token mm. to buff it up to a 3 1. Uh, so it's going to take you down five. Man. All right, so I dropped down to two. Yep. Uh, death touch here, so this will die. Yep. Uh, go ahead. All right. Untap and draw. And Kevin, congratulations. I drew a plane. <laughs> and I will concede, sir. Good game. Yes, sir. That was a fun one. A uh, lot of awesome cards in this mm -hmm. set. I will go ahead and say Seraph of the Scales is a game winner, guys. <laughs> Just so you know. You want that card. Yeah. You do want that card. Uh, yeah, very happy to open that. Uh, we will talk about final thoughts in a little bit of a wrap-up, so stick around for that. But I do hope you enjoyed this game. We had a good time. Yep. Uh, a lot of fun on this one. So uh, stick around for that, and we will see you there. All right, All right guys, welcome to the wrap-up of the first game for us with Ravnica Allegiance. It was a ton of fun. Uh, Tyler, how'd you feel about it, buddy? 
Uh, overall, I really enjoyed um, <laughs> the actual process that we went through. Um, <laughs> How'd you enjoy the game, buddy? <laughs> I'm a little salty still, Kevin. Are you still a little salty? I'm a little salty, I'm yes. Sorry. Uh, no, it was a really good game, actually. I thought, obviously. Uh, but I will say, it was really down to three key cards for me. Yeah. Uh, the first one being Drillbit, surprisingly. Uh, that card saved my butt, because had I not been able to take your kill spell... That Seraph would not have stuck. That literally was the most single-handed play yeah. that I believe basically won you the game. No, I definitely agree. I do think also, uh, and I do have the cards here, just to remind me, I have Rally to Battle, mm -hmm. which was also just kind of a blowout turn. Uh, I was able to surprise block all of your stuff oh, and man. then kill it all off, uh, which cleared your board very, very efficiently. Love that card. And then obviously Seraph of the Scales was just a powerhouse card. If you open it, play it. Super, super powerful card. Yeah, Kevin. I mean, when we actually sat down to play, I mean, I overlooked the deck tech and it looked decently solid on my end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had a number of flyers. I had uh, enough creatures to do what yeah. I needed to do. I didn't have any standalone single bomb. In fact, sure. my two best creatures were the Azorius Skyguard yeah. and Azorius Knight Arbiter. Yeah. Uh, those coming from the seated pack. And mm -hmm. so most of my pulls, unfortunately, came from other support colors, which yeah. were not included in this. And that made it really difficult. Where, no, absolutely. In my opinion, you not only grabbed one of the best <laughs> flying in color creatures, yeah. but also the black white board white. Yeah, I got Kaya's right. I mean, I've got, I pulled uh, out of just my packs. My seated pack wasn't honestly all that good. Uh, I will say, though, uh, just as a tidbit, if you're going to be pre-releasing, those seated packs really, really push you into your main two colors. Correct. That's just kind of yeah. how that goes. Uh, but in this case, I think it, it, it really shoves you in that direction. But uh, even just out of my packs, I think I played uh, all but one of my rares, and it was because it was a hollow fountain, <laughs> and I wasn't <laughs> splashing. So. Correct, yeah. And um, so <laughs> when you were actually putting together your deck... Yeah. Um, did you have any issues with uh, finding enough removal, enough creatures? What was yeah, your biggest so thing up when you built your deck? That was, that's a really good point, actually, because uh, I was giving a lot of consideration to curve more than creature count and spell okay. count. Now, I did, uh, because I had cards like Rally to Battle, mm -hmm. uh, and then I believe Civic Stalwart also gives creatures plus one, plus one, things like that. I wanted to have a higher creature count, yeah. uh, but that did make it a little bit difficult on the removal end because... I kind of had to piece together a few things. Uh, that being said, I did get uh, some efficient removal. Really, I didn't get I didn't get any mortifies. I didn't get any uh, the two mana kill spell. Nothing really great in my colors. Yeah. So I kind of had to piece together some black uh, removal out of just you know random bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. That was really the best way that I could handle it. So yeah, Kevin. So whenever I sat down to actually build the deck, I actually ran into a couple of issues myself. So. Yeah. Uh, Blue White obviously is going to be playing extremely heavy control. Absolutely. Um, but I also found a lot of my creatures kind of falling into these categories of wanting to do their own thing. I yeah. had creatures from uh, Adept, you know, where we're paying more mana mm -hmm. into this to kind of pump it up, which is a great mechanic. It is a great mechanic. But then we yeah. also uh, off camera talked about the uh, advisors. Yes. Um, you know, so I had a lot of like, <laughs> you know, you have these great creatures and then it seems like they kind of split into three different directions, which yeah. makes it really kind of difficult well, to put together. And if you don't uh, mind me saying still, no, go you know, for you it. had uh, the mechanic Afterlife. I did. And, you know, your creatures go out there, they do battle, they die, and then you get more bodies, and you come back swinging the next turn even wider. Yeah. That also kind of was the finishing blow. It was, that led yeah, that yeah. To that defeat. Um, and so for my color schemes, it seemed like, okay, there was counter spells in my deck. Yeah, I had card draw. Mm -hmm. I had a little bit of life gain. Mm -hmm. There were some controlling um, bodies that you know really kind of tax the game. Sure, uh, put taxes on your creatures a little Absolutely. bit with those minus yes. one, minus zero <laughs> yeah, yeah. counters. Um, but still, you were able to actually just push through your <laughs> curve was on point and that was the goal oh that was man. the goal i kind of i mean i did have a couple fives and one six i believe the six was a removal spell so i really didn't yeah. even count that uh but i did have a couple fives in there most everything else was like curving out around three and four mm -hmm. uh and that was really the goal i wanted i mean afterlife is a very sort of combat heavy yep. mechanic because the idea being that even if you do swing in and you lose your creatures it kind of doesn't matter that much so uh, I wanted to be able to push through that damage as early and as quickly as possible, so keeping that curve low was really the key. 
Uh, I did have, like I said, Rally to Battle was a really key mm -hmm. card, I think, because uh, it's a lucrative card. Obviously, oh, because it untaps your creatures, you're able to play it on defense yeah. as a combat trick, or if nobody blocks, you just blow them out with a bunch of damage, you yeah. know what I mean? And so Absolutely. I was really like cautious about that card at first, mm -hmm. only because I wasn't sure if I was going to have the creature count to make that worthwhile. Yeah. Uh, but I think even if you only have three, four creatures, which I did at the time, I had yeah. three, that made it more than worth it. Correct. I mean, it was perfect. Now, uh, adding on to that, actually, yeah. um, so if we were to do this again, yeah. my first question to you is, would you go with uh, knowing the meta right now mm -hmm. of what black white looks like mm -hmm. what blue white control looks like would you draft another um azorius or uh orzov color or mm -hmm. would you actually go with a different guild i think i would go with a up? different one and honestly i had my eye on gruel sure. uh, a little bit uh i think that's one of the best like limited color mm -hmm. combinations solely because uh the riot mechanic is just stupid uh it's insane it's pretty good uh, yeah. <laughs> it's really good so I'm interested to see how that one plays out uh, over the next weekend or so because obviously a lot of people are going to be playing with it. We'll hear about it. But uh, I do think Riot is a particularly good mechanic in yeah. Limited. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think probably not quite as good in Constructed, but I do think in Limited it really finds its home there. So I probably would jump into Gruul. Yeah. Uh, I loved Orzov, I will say. So if you are looking to Orzov, great color combination. Yeah. Uh, very, very good. I actually do think uh, Azorius is a good color combination too, but I don't think it's as good in limited. Correct. Uh, and you brought that up in the in the intro. You know, I really did. Um, I you can look at this set as a whole, and you can kind of picture a roadway of what's going to be happening. Yeah. If you remember what uh, Golgari was uh, mm -hmm. with Guilds of Ravnica specifically, um, this is one of those situations where we find ourselves where you identify with your guild. Yeah. You want to play your guild. Yeah. And you get rewarded for it just not in the gameplay sometimes. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so what I mean with that is, I mean, you guys have uh, right here the actual pre kits um, and the spin downs that are actually in these things are actually just so beautiful. Yeah, they I are. Was, I can't shut up about this. I know. Freaking die. He won't. But, it's annoying. Um, <laughs> now, <laughs> if you're wanting to go with your identified guild, yeah. don't expect to necessarily um, have the best of both worlds yeah yeah um you, we're gonna see what happened like girl is going to be what basically boros was in guilt where yeah, 100%. that is going to be the if you're going to want to aggro out and go big and go wide that will be the kind of archetype to choose from i think so um if you're not choosing that then you're going to be going into more of a i'm here to identify with my guild yeah um and i do think rakdos has some legs as well uh just because the spectacle mechanic really incentivizes like aggro playability sure. yeah uh and it does have a number of creatures that are going to be good for it but giving every creature haste uh if you want to off of riot just seems way more aggressive uh, yeah. to me i think the spectacle mechanic uh, definitely incentivizes aggro play, mm -hmm. but the gruel mechanic enables aggro play. Yeah. Uh, so now, that's kind of where I am. Kevin, uh, with our last piece with this, um, yeah. we obviously only stuck to two colors. Yeah. Um, I know for me, I wanted to definitely incorporate some black. Sure. Did you ever find yourself um, wanting to specifically flash? No. No. no I'm just going to go ahead and say sure. no. Uh, only because, I mean, I opened so many uh, good good rares sure, for sure. my color combination. Yeah. Now, I did have some very good uncommons and things like that in other set or in mm -hmm. other guilds, but uh, really, Orzov was pushed in my pre-release kit, okay. I will say. So that's that's definitely where I would have ended up. All right, Kevin. So we had a great time playing. Yeah. Um, you know, you obviously won. Uh, that was a best of one match. So it was just a best of we'll one. We'll see what happens next year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> next season with the next pre-release. Um, do you have any final thoughts to wrap this up with? Uh, I just want to wish everybody out there a very happy pre-release. I think it's going to be a really fun set. It looks really sweet. Playing it was awesome. Obviously, we didn't get the full experience of it, but we did get to play with these. Uh, super, super fun set. So good luck to you all. If you have any deck lists or anything like that that you uh, come up with with your pre-release kits, feel free to share them below. Uh, we'd love to check them out. Definitely. And with that, um, one last note. So this video was sponsored by Grand Slam. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in Rock Hill, uh, come down and play with us. We're going to be obviously doing a midnight release on Friday. 
Um, that will be at midnight. And then I believe we're doing a two-headed giant on Saturday. There you go. Uh, bring a friend. Come on down and say, hey, uh, I know I'll be there. Uh, Kevin, you <laughs> I'm have I'm going to be out plans. of town, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a good time. Grand Slam is truly a fantastic store uh, run by some fantastic people. And Tyler helps out there as well, so you can come hang out with him. <laughs> now, Kevin, if uh, someone out there catches this video um, on vice versa of our channels, yeah. uh, where can they find you at? Uh, so my link is in the description, but it is YouTube.com slash it resolves uh we do podcast stuff we do cracker packs we do anything you can think of i ramble once a week which is just fun uh mostly for me not for you uh but uh it is a really good time so definitely check out the channel tyler what about you uh you can just find me at uh burst of knowledge there you uh, go. type that in your search bar on youtube and there i am i'm also on twitter uh, Facebook. You can also just find me at burst underscore knowledge. There you go. That's that simple. Uh, we'll put a link in the description, so click that button. If you guys enjoyed this video, you can do us a favor and click that subscribe button, hit and give us a thumbs up if you've liked this. It really supports us and lets us know that we are on the right track to do this <laughs> next time. That's the goal, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you hopefully in the next Magic Wars video.